just kidding don't I don't find that funny don't do that hey YouTube world it's me Evelyn and this is the Kenya vlog vlogs two parts <laughs> So I was the host of One Love Travel Club's trip to Kenya at the beginning of this year, 2018. And the reason it locked my world, rocked my world, stay with me, is because if you're new to me and this channel and this crevice of the internet, I am Kenyan. Both my parents are from Kenya. My mother and my father are both from Kenya, East Africa. Do you realize? Do you realize what this means? And though they were able to bring me back to Kenya, both me and my brother, um, during our childhood, it had been over a decade since the last time I was able to see my extended family. I was a skinny neck, 14 or 15 year old, you know what I'm saying? A big old East African forehead. I had straight backs because Alicia Keys said it was okay. All right, the year was 2005. And at 27 years old, I would be going back to Kenya for the first time in a long time, the first time as an adult, and the first time by myself. And this trip really came at a time when I was making huge decisions about what I thought my life needed to look like going forward. So, for example, for some context, um, I quit my full-time job and my last day was a Friday, okay? Monday, was Christmas, so drove home for Christmas. And then Tuesday, I was on a plane from DFW, all right, to Kenya. Yeah. The One Love Travel Club trip itself was seven days long, it was a week long, but I decided to come early and stay later, making my entire Kenya journey about four weeks. So the Kenya trip, all right, hey! <laughs> so the Kenya trip had three legs, okay? City, safari, and beach. Doing all that in a week is tight. Since the chances of people coming back to the country are pretty slim, at least ensure that the major aspects of tourism are hit. Why spend money to feel like you missed something? You feel me? So seven days to do all that is tight, but I still think that was the best route to go. So, me and myself, I land in Nairobi and I don't die. I was kind of scared because I thought it would be like landing in Lagos, Nigeria. It is nothing like landing in Lagos, Nigeria. In Lagos, I am overwhelmed. I am just overwhelmed. So, beep, 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 sk, 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 eh, eh, just so much. There's so much noise. And I just end up landing in Lagos looking fresh and foreign. Landing in Nairobi, Jomo Kenyatta Airport was much calmer, uh, easy to navigate. And I'm not biased, you know, because my passport is still blue, okay? They be looking at my passport, looking at me like, hmm, where will come back? Where have you been? <laughs> where have you been, hmm? Where will come? So day one, we meet up. We meet everybody. Everybody starts trickling in from their various states and countries. We stayed in Amber Hotel on Gong Road in Nairobi. It's a Double Tree Hilton affiliate type situation, and it was really nice. I had already been with my family for about a week before meeting up with the One Love Travel Club group and that experience was You'll learn about that in part two. So needless to say I was hyped to be in a hotel bed All right So people were just flying in over the course of the day making their way to the hotel People had started walking around the area. Some folks already had some shopping done already You know black women don't waste no time and I started to meet all the hashtag internet cousins that had booked the trip because I was the host. We had our first group dinner that night there at Amber Hotel. And you know, it was hotel dinner. You know what I'm saying? And I'll talk about the food aspect of the trip in Kenya later on in the video, but put a pin in that. Day two, all right, so the first full day in Kenya as a group is the day that I had my workshop. Every host of a One Love Travel Club trip is required to have a workshop in which they speak about their expertise, answer questions, and share their knowledge with the people who booked the trip. So I talked about being from the internet and I talked about online entrepreneurship, social media, storytelling, writing, blogging, and my journey 
from wherever the heck I was to wherever the heck I am now. So after my workshop, we all got on a bus and went to Mokoro Kwajenga, which is a community that is considered a slum. Every One Love Travel Club trip does have some sort of social awareness or volunteering aspect of the trip and Kenya was no different. I just think a lot of us weren't prepared for what we were about to see. The goal was to visit a school and learn more about its students, the teacher who founded the school who was originally from that area, and learn about Kenya through the eyes of people who are not serviced properly. My cousin, genetic cousin, <laughs> Uh, met up with us that day and joined us on the trip and that in and of itself was a lot because the last time I had seen her she was probably 11 and now she's like 22 you feel me so that was a moment and she ended up actually being very helpful to the group and giving a lot more context to what the teachers and the, the principal the founder was saying do you know of Maslow's theory the, the one you, you have class to, to think about your needs, yes. then you go to, to the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harry You don't really think about it first, really. I, I didn't get the impression that safety was a thing. Will I even be able to sleep? I know of people who stay in a house like this and about seven of them, and they fit in perfect. Yeah? So it's, it's, it's pretty... It's hard and it's sad at the same time because now you really have to look across. And we were able to talk to the kids somewhat, you know what I'm saying? There's a language barrier. And so again, my cousin was helpful in speaking to the kids and leading them in games. You know, we don't know all the, the nursery rhymes and things over there. So she was very helpful in that regard. Then Billy, two, two, Tato, three, Ne, four, Tano, five. I know, it's just Oh, okay. Okay, let them come. But a couple people in the group had some expertise and you know they busted out a notepad and a calculator and started getting to work on how to fundraise for them because no, as volunteers, as foreigners, we cannot solve issues in the Kenyan economy and the political structure and the historical reasons why this community is the way it is, but we can buy notebooks. You know what I'm saying? Like there are some actionable things that we can provide. Desks, teaching aids, sponsor the family, the building, bunk beds, blankets, mattresses, pillows, sports equipment, and contingency money. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Maybe one any other that I've not remembered will be able to be in touch and I'll be able to call them. Okay. Yeah. Day three and four, safari day. So we rolled out from our hotel in Nairobi and took a six-ish hour drive out to Masai Mara. Masai Mara is a national reserve that spans the Kenyan-Tanzanian border. Sorry, Tanzanian. And it's a long drive, but the views? That I would have to pay for protection. Okay, we made our second rest stop. Got me some uh, tingly, <laughs> tingly cheese and onion. Tingly cheese. <laughs> tingly cheese and onion. I don't know what's tingly, but uh, crackles. <laughs> We finally get to our destination, Sarova Mara is how we might say it, but we all know it's Sarova. So the lodge was beautiful, it was very quiet, very, very quiet. That quiet that you can hear, and then you hear like the birds. 
The lodging was like a tent suite situation. So take a regular hotel suite and instead of a roof, put like a like a heavy duty, you know, situation. It was lovely. I loved hearing the rain through that. Oh, loved it. So there were several safaris planned for different times of the day according to what the safari people, rangers, <laughs> tour guides, said um, would be best for certain animals. You could go on one safari, you could go on all the safaris, you go on none of the safaris. I don't know why you would do that and take that long trip just to not see animals in their natural habitat. God's creation, okay, splendor. So I'm gonna just let this footage rock. Warning, you might see a clip of a lion eating dinner and uh, lions aren't vegan. I won't be able to stop like that. <laughs> wow. Belly out and everything. See me get good last night. Hey So if they come and surround with us, you can dance with them, you can jump with them, you can have photo with them. They are good people, friendly too. So feel your home, any question, no problem. In a circle is for sure to protect against wild animals. And our house is all made of local branches, grass, and cow dung. And always women make the houses. So once we were in Nairobi, we hopped on a regional plane and took a short one hour-ish flight from Nairobi, which is the city, all the way to the coast, Mombasa. Coast means beach, and beach means dip your hip in the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. There were various water activities planned for us and you could participate in them depending on your comfort level with jet skis or uh, just regular paddle boat. You feel me? I was on the paddle boat tip. And of course, on your own time, you can swim, you can be on the beach, you can get black. You feel me? Black. And you can holla at the dudes walking up and down the beach with their camels and pay for a camel ride or two. So, while 
while we were in Mombasa, I decided to reach out to Brian Kimani here on YouTube. He has a channel called Getaway Planet. And I think it's really dope because I'm tired of watching white dudes from England and Australia um, and white dudes from South Africa travel through Africa. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to support... You feel me? And I think he's really dope. So I reached out to him to see if he wanted to join us for dinner. So we went out for dinner on day five and I believe um, just nighttime fun times on day six. Yeah. And I actually think One Love Travel Club trips would be enriched by inviting influencers and creative types from that country or that city to come and lend their insight and expertise and kind of kind of give that flavor, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. And so he really showed us a good time and I'm glad we got to meet up. So this is the part where we talk about Kenyan food, okay? I don't think folks on the trip got the full Kenyan food experience because we stayed in nice places. It's like going to New York City for the first time, staying at the Four Seasons and expecting to get that New York pizza that's like as big as your face with the grease dripping down that's not where you go for that kenya has a lot of different cultures a lot of different foodstuffs available for you to consume so when you visit i would ask for swahili food so that you get pointed in the direction of coastal food that that's where you find the biryanis that's where you find um the curry this the curry that the food of my people is like farmer food it's like potatoes and beans ugali starch Sukumawiki, greens. All these foods, no matter what region it's from, are not gonna be found in nice hotels. And if you do find them in hotels, it's gonna be like the, this version. Since I'm essentially a tourist also, I wasn't able to show people on the trip like the fullness, the richness, the deliciousness of Kenyan food. And because of that, my internet cousins didn't eat nearly the amount of samosas I believe a human should eat in a day. For that, I sincerely apologize. And when I told my family of this, they said to let them know next time you are back in Kenya and they will feed you. So DM me and I will make the connection. All right, very good. Day seven, roll out. After some time at the beach, we go back to the airport and fly from Mombasa to Nairobi and from Nairobi to wherever home is. It's so natural. You belong to me. I belong to you. Go to the end of the road. Still I can't let go. It's so natural. Group trips are fascinating, you know? You start off as strangers, and over time and experiences, you get to bond with people and form friendships that will last past the trip. Like when I went to London this year, I reached out to two of the girls who were from the UK that were on the Kenya trip, and we got to hang out. They took me to Primark for the first time. I was hype. Oh my God. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> We're out here at Westfield Mall. At Prime, I went to Primark. We had a little drink. Cheerio! <laughs> Like we out here with a global network now, you know? If anybody ever comes to Austin, Texas for whatever reason, holla at your girl. So that's where I'll end this vlog. You can visit One Love Travel Club's website to learn more. So there is another Kenya trip happening with One Love Travel Club, January 2019, so coming up. I will not be hosting that trip, but if you have any specific questions, please do not hesitate to ask me in the comments below. Super grateful that I was able to go on this trip. So thank you One Love Travel Club and thank you Chloe for thinking of me, for bringing your girl home. So my One Love Travel Club trip has come to an end. The rest of my journey home is just the beginning, all right? But I'll leave that for part two. In the comments below, let me know what African nation you would like to visit someday and I'll see you on the internet somewhere. Bye.